two, one, we're live. Okay, so we're now live on uh, YouTube on 5 by 5 News. Uh, good evening, Claire. So, without further ado, I'll introduce myself for those who haven't seen me before. I am Mark Bullock, and I'm the author of the uh, Las Vegas Mass Shooting Exposing the Lies, and how I came to be involved in the whole situation uh, is quite bizarre to say the least um not like a victim or anything like that and unlike mike turber i'm also not one of the original researchers slash investigators from way back when right. i was brought in at a later stage to evaluate certain aspects of the night regarding lvmpd for two independent entities and from there, uh, the issues that I found were troublesome to say the least. So from there, it's now morphed into the book, which will be released in the next couple of weeks. We've had a bit of a snag because with working, so the reason I'm looking between two cameras, because I'm literally on two cameras. So I don't want to be rude to one side of the audience and not to the other. Um, so there's been a snag with the book because we're waiting on some other stuff to come through. Uh, which myself and Mike are following up in Vegas. Is it next week, Mike? Yeah, we'll be in Vegas next week. Yeah, we're in Vegas next week. We're also going to do some live streams in Vegas as well next week. Um, it's on Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Mike's been actually quite busy this week, um, where I've been lounging by the pool and uh, writing my manuscript. Mike's been a busy little bee. Uh, so, yeah, so one of the biggest questions I'm always asked is about the timestamps. And Mike and I, have, I think we've butted heads on this quite a few times. <laughs> um, so I say for Facebook views, you won't be able to see, in fact, what I can do. I think this might work. Um, let me see if I can post a snapshot. Yes, I can. So for those on Facebook, Mike, two seconds. Let me just do this and I'll uh, share the screen. Okay, so for those on Facebook, you can should be able to see a post come up without any um, words. Uh, it's just a photo. It's a still image, actually. Of, okay, you're sharing on yours. Yeah, you I'm going to share now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it now, man. I'm just uh, okay. Share screen. Uh, we want. And everybody bear with us as we do this, because this was a very last minute thing. We had to put it together really quick. <laughs> yeah, literally. And we're doing it across two different platforms and two different systems. So, um, Mike, can you see my screen? No. Which screen are you looking at? Um, hold on. Let me add it to the screen. You ready? Here we go. There's okay. yours. You ready there you for go. it? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. I'm good. So, this is the biggest issue we've got is... Uh, the timestamps. This here on the right is actually footage of the unarmed security guard, Jesus Campos, who was wounded upon the 32nd floor at some time after 10 p.m. on the night of 1 October. And what's interesting about this footage is not only did it take over a year to come out, uh, the timestamp is actually masked. If you look at this footage to the left of it, this is of the shooter. I'll just zoom in on that, actually. Um, the footage on the left is actually of the shooter in one of the concession stores in the hotel off the same camera system. And you will notice that the font's the same and everything else is just on this one, there's a timestamp right here. But on this one, there is no timestamp, which is quite interesting because they claim the reason this was removed and this put there, the, old, the artificial timestamp was because there was a genuine issue with what they call the Palco system. However, as ever with uh, anything to do with 1 October. It's not quite correct. Uh, why is it not letting me? Oh, I know why. Okay, this should not let me do it. Okay, now this is the other footage. This is actually what is claimed to be a campus entering the 32nd floor on the night of um, 1 October from the 33rd floor. Now, for those on Facebook, you will now get the same view. I'm just waiting for it to load up. 
Okay. So, uh, so for those on Facebook, you'll be able to see now two items of footage. The one on the right is of Campos entering allegedly on the 33rd floor at 10 p.m. and 19 seconds. And as you can see, the one on the left is from the shooter uh, checking at the VIP check-in on the 25th of September with no um, timestamp masked. And again, it was claimed that on that night, the system was having issues. So they had to mask these timestamps to um, stop confusing people. Oh, hey, CL, sir, I didn't see you joined in on... Uh, YouTube, on YouTube, I'm, uh, as I say, I'm doing two different things at once. Um, so the biggest question is, um, Mike, I know did a video on this. How long ago, Mike? On the on the elevator thing or what? On, on the, the timestamps. Oh, the timestamps guy. That was over a year yeah. ago. Yeah. yeah. So this is how I did determine what was going on. So this is the LVMPD log from the night of 1 October on the... Uh, convention center traffic and this is what i've used and that will become relevant in a minute this radio transmission right here at 10 13 pm and 54 seconds uh, let me just post that to my page on facebook so i can see the the log two seconds oh, good evening keith Okay, the post should now be on the log. If anyone finds it easier, you can actually jump on YouTube and look at 5x5 five five News, and I'm also live on there. Um, so yeah, so this log is critical because I've used this time here to sync with this body cam footage here. And you'll notice that the time stamps are slightly different. That's because this one, the master time as I've called it, it's 20, it's 17 seconds, sorry, faster than this one. So how does that help us? Well, quite simple. Because this is from inside the control room on the night of 1 October. And let me just share that on Facebook so everyone can see that also. And as you're observing that, uh, it's that one there. you'll notice, uh, again, another problem with this is the body cam is actually set up for Zulu time, not um, local time. So again, a lot of people tend to have a problem, but this is basically 11.35 and seven seconds. Um, on the Palco system, which is a security system, the overlay is saying 11.35 and 18 seconds. Okay. So we just basically subtract the difference of this and that from the um, Master time and it comes up to six seconds. So, literally, this is a minor discrepancy between the Palco system and the official catalog. So, it shows there was no issues really. I mean, in any investigation, six seconds disparity is not a bad thing. It's uh, one of the many inconsistencies. So, there was no need to, I think that's the end of the slides. Yep. So, I'm going to stop sharing that screen now. There you go. Okay. So, so yeah, so basically that's one of the questions answered is how did I come up with my timeline? So in the book, any timeline, unless otherwise stated, is referring to the LVMPD CAD times, which is the most accurate from what I can determine. And then there's no arguments from various entities saying, well, you didn't do this and you didn't do that. You can't argue with police time, unfortunately. So... Why investigators never saw that is a very interesting matter because they genuinely were restricted in a lot of ways and that was one of them. So is there any questions so far? Hey, there's Vegas two shooters. Um, Mike, what the hell are you watching? I'm trying to go on my Facebook page because I'm broadcasting there to tell people to come here to oh, okay. the YouTube page. Okay, so, so does anyone have any questions so far about the book? about the, what it's going to contain. No, not even Mick Burns. He's normally quite vocal. <laughs> um, hey, Sable Faux, Vegas, everybody. If you have any questions, uh, just remember, if you have to ask them on the YouTube channels, either his or mine, 
Um, actually, you're not broadcasting on yours, so you'd have no. to ask on mine. If you ask in Facebook, you'll have to be on his Facebook page. Yeah. But on my yeah. Facebook page, if you ask a question, it will not show up in here. I'm going to try to monitor it uh, as best I can. So, so, yeah, basically the book in question just exposes the disparity between what the public was told in the official evidence because there is a uh i'll go on to your question I'll, I'll answer your question in a minute mick um there was a genuine disparity between fact and fiction because genuinely the official narrative is a lot of fiction which you will see in the book and again my book isn't filled with conspiracy theories me and mike had this out on day one i do not prescribe to them um and anyone that tries to give a conspiracy theory i shut them down pretty quickly with facts and then I tend to upset a lot of people, but I really don't care. Uh, so back to Mick Burns's comment, which was maybe they knew about the time difference and chose to be and chose to ignore it. Uh, no, they actually didn't. Um, so the mindset of the detectives was that it was an open and shut case in a sense because they had the perpetrator, they had all the weapons, and the perpetrator was dead by the time anyone had accessed the room. So there wasn't a problem to them. Uh, the investigation was initially run by the homicide department, but they were quickly moved off there for unknown reasons. And the force investigation team took over. And a lot of people crit criticized our VMPD for that. And it's one of the biggest issues to date. But basically the force investigation team is more of an internal affairs department. And they specifically only look at the officer involved shootings. Um, and it, with that, they are not as skilled as homicide detectives because again the homicide detectives are trained in a completely different way and the the fit team is normally the complementary team in any sort of instance so to speak they're, they're secondary they're on the peripheral so no one really sees them and uh you know it's that simple so why they were given such a major investigation like this no one no one knows but it's been speculated it's because they knew there wouldn't be a very good and thorough job done so any other questions? Have I missed any questions, Mike, on the YouTube feed? Uh, not that I can see. He says, um, it's if, because right now I'm trying to finish up the other thing here and I've got Afghanistan going. But um, on Stable Foe, I think he asked the question, is, is you, so your information, warfare stuff, okay, it says Stable Foe is just having fun. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I saw that one come up. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm actually surprised Mick Burns. He's normally got more to send out. Me yeah, if anyone has any questions in here, just uh, do us a favor. I know this is last minute. It kind of caught everybody off, of guard, off guard. So yeah. I appreciate, you know, any yeah. number of people coming in. It's greatly appreciated. Yeah. Um, if you could, if you do ask a question, please try to type it in all caps. That tells me immediately it's a question for Mark and not necessarily uh, you guys talking amongst each other. So if you could do that in all caps, that would be greatly appreciated. And I'll put a note up there that will remind people. Anyway, okay. go ahead. And I'd just like to thank Matt Gilmore for joining us. Matt, if there's any breaks within the recording, it, uh, sorry, the live stream, it's because genuinely I'm doing this across two different platforms on two different channels with the assistance of, uh, I suppose we could call each other friends now, Mike. It's been long enough. Um, what? <laughs> I'm um, going to cry. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, if, if you want to watch this on YouTube instead, uh, watch it on 5x5 Five Five News on YouTube and again it's you know we're on Facebook we're on YouTube we're actually going myself and Mike are actually going live next week this is for the purpose of Matt uh, from Vegas we will be um, I don't actually what we're gonna go live for Mike what, what, what was the master plan behind that one well I'm gonna that? go live anyway just because you know it's, it's a precursor to the fourth uh, yeah. anniversary as well uh, plus we're gonna be there and you'll you and I will go over some things the particular room that we'll be in we can actually discuss some situations yes. that are room uh yes. related um that no i don't think anyone's ever done before except except me and you um so we can do that so yeah. um that, that'll be it so we'll be going live from vegas um starting next week i'll probably do uh quite a few lives um and uh mark and i will be working on some vegas stuff which will yeah. become known around that time or later uh and he is writing a book and the book uh um, do you want to share the yeah. Hang on a second. Uh, so in response to Keith Lejeune's answer, were the time discrepancies throughout the event or just at the beginning? It's mm -hmm. a hard one to judge because it's throughout the whole event, to be quite honest. I think when you look at it in a roundabout way, 
because the only times they really use focus is on um, the wounded or the security guard up on the 32nd floor. When you think about it, Mike, I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen any other, well, apart from the, um, yeah, okay, Matt, um, if you get lost on the link, just let me know and I'll see if I can post something. Um, okay. and I'm just talking to this one of my uh, people watching on uh, you on Facebook. Um, all right. So, oh, yeah. wow. Okay, you can. Um, Scott, Scott Oswalski, can you try to ask a question on Facebook? I want to see if it comes up in here. I just saw mine come up and I did that in Facebook, I thought. Um, Maybe they fixed it. What's in the book Vegas Two Shooters? That's on YouTube. I'll come on to that in a second. So, yeah, I mean, it genuinely was the whole incident that there was time disparities. There's two times flying around from security logs, which the later times are discarded for unknown reasons. Um, there's alleged and again no one really knows how mgmri actually came up with the timestamps on their edited footage um then ne that's never been fully explained um so it's quite hard to figure that one out um yeah that was a good question nick um so yeah i mean it's again it's in the book i don't go because again what you've got to understand is with the the, the time discrepancies and me and mike we, we've batted this back and forth on you know mike obviously there's different specialities to who I am, but so we complement each other in a lot of ways. Um, I'm more the more hands on Mike's more the geeky gremlin. Was like, the what? <laughs> geeky gremlin, I call you Mike. Um, so no, there's um, so there, there's two ways that devices collect time. Uh, typically on security systems like the Palco, which is the one that the hotel was using, it's off the internet time, which is set by one of many atomic clocks. Uh, where the body cam footage and cell phones and whatnot that create, get a signal from cell towers um, typically uh, are set by GPS time. Excuse me. So there will be a disparity between the two times. Typically, it's called a latency, and it's roughly about 25 to 30 seconds. Uh, investigators tend to pick their own central computer systems to use as a master clock, and then they obviously work out the difference and figure out everything from that. However, it seems that on 1 October that wasn't done. It was just a free-for-all, I think, with the times, to be quite honest. And Mick actually raised a point saying, um, you know, the, 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 the initial accounts given by our VMPD were very sketchy. I think within the space of it four days, Mike, there was five different versions of events of what really went on. On the on the timeline? Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 what ha we, you, not, you and I know what happened when it started shifting yeah. over towards the, the management of the timeline yeah. and then... Um, you know, that uh, yeah. there was at least four or five times. I think they probably changed it behind the scenes a couple of times without oh, us yeah. even knowing it. Yeah, that, that was evident. There was, you know, it, it's yeah. like the final report. Um, there were that many drafts done of it. Um, it was just crazy. It really was. Um, I, I mean, it come to a point where when you read the final report, it seems so... Um, how What's the best way? It's, it's, it just is confusing in many places. And that's because when the detectives were writing the report, uh, they were basically sending up the chain of command to get authorization to release it, The chain, which is very unusual to start with because typically they don't do that. Uh, the chain of command didn't like what they were reading. So to save the officers to keep writing paragraphs and everything else, they literally um, just deleted stuff. And by the end of it, it was um, quite interesting when you read the report. I think when I was talking to Mike for one of the first times we went through the report together and it took us like six hours mm -hmm. and it was quite a, I mean, there was that many pen marks in the master report I had. It was unbelievable. Um, but again, all that's in the book because I did speak to key sources within certain avenues who um, gave a lot of good insight and a lot of good info. And yeah, Mick, that's a good way to describe it. It's a fantasy report in a lot of respects. Um, you know, and there were a lot of oddities with the final report, such as why it focused on Campos and not the shooter in a lot of areas, and it did. Um, you know, and it's it's why would the... Again, because of what, what people forget is in the early days, Campos was hailed as a hero. I mean, he truly was. I mean, the, the initial report that he was assisting police officers and given out... He, he basically risked his life, according to them, to stop the shooter. Um, but then it later turned out he didn't. And then it got worse from there. And then when he went on the Ellen DeGeneres show, <clears throat> uh, that was the 13th, I believe. Was that the 13th or the 18th of October, Mike? 
For what? When Campos went on the Ellen DeGeneres show. Oh God, I don't remember. I know, I know, I got in trouble for rebroadcasting it. Yeah. Um, oh, just so everybody knows too, that show was, um, you know, it's supposed to be before a live audience. That one was not. And of all yeah. her shows, I think she's only had two shows that were not in front of a live audience, and that was one of them because they had to re do a couple of the scenes to the choreographed show that it became. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just going to respond to uh, Keith sure. LeJune's comment on Facebook. Were there procedures not executed or just delayed procedures? Um, genuinely, it was quite actually shocking to see such a hotel chain. I, I, I think you're referring to the hotel. Is that right, Keith? Can you just confirm? Um, because again, there was no actual procedures per sort of set in stone. It was different shifts did different things. So when, for instance, a lot of the door checks, because that's what Campos was actually doing upon the 32nd floor was a door check. Um, you know, a lot of shifts didn't, didn't even actually check them. They just closed them out. It was just the fact that the shift manager that time was a stickler for following his own procedures, which was to check every door check. And that's why Campos ended up on the floor. Uh, as with the law enforcement, <clears throat> so the initial officers did follow procedures on a set in a sense of assault in the room because again, LVMPD have been given a lot of flack over their initial response. And I can tell you now, there is only one officer out of the whole. I think there was close to seven to eight hundred officers on the ground within ten minutes. That really can be called into question. Um, that was a guy called um, called Al Hendricks. He got to the thirty-first floor. In fact, he would have been one of the officers on the 32nd floor had he continued going up there with his training officer and three security officers from the hotel. Uh, they're all armed, and they basically stayed on the 31st floor. And then eventually, after the shooter killed himself, he then made it up to the source. I, I think it, he, was, he ended about two foot away from the fire exit. But all the other officers who managed to get into the hotel, once they were directed to the right floor, oh, there he is, there's Mike. Um, once, he, once they were directed to the right floor, they, they genuinely did try and close and engage with the shooter. But a lot of people don't understand um, the, the tactical methodology, for want of a better word, on how a mass shootings are governed in the whole. So when the shooter was firing, he was a threat. So the idea was then to form strike teams and close with the shooter's location and neutralize the threat, basically. However, by the time... Um, by the time the police got to the floor, which was uh, Beeston and Beeston and Featherstone, the shooter had stopped firing, so he was then not classed as a threat. And they advanced down the corridor with several other officers as far as they could and waited for the SWAT team to um, arrive and basically take over the show. Uh, but they were fully, if you watch the body cam footage, the two officers who originally got up on the floor were fully prepared, along with several others to literally charge down the hallway and take on the shooter if they had to. Because again, by this point, they knew as he had fired down the hallway, they knew someone was wounded in the hallway, which was Campos. Um, and they were all actually under the impression the guy had uh, what they called a belt-fed machine gun in the room. And they were fearing that he was going to turn it around and face it directly down the hallway and just start firing. So as they advanced, the reason it took them so long to get up to the room or just short of the room was because they had to clear guest rooms as they went. And there was, I think, three rooms that contained multiple people. There was a couple of the rooms that contained people who were extremely intoxicated. Um, <laughs> Slightly. And they, to, and they had to literally physically get one guy out of bed and dress him, uh, which, again, slowed down their momentum. Uh, but the officers did do a fabulous job that night, apart from Hendrix. Um, I've spoken to several who were in the venue who managed to get to the hotel or were just permanently in the venue. And it wasn't for the lack of trying. Um, in fact, I think it was Beeson at one point was going to um, fire his weapon up at the hotel when he was on the entranceway to the Mandalay Bay. But unfortunately, well, fortunately, unfortunately, whichever way you look at it, he couldn't get a clear shot. And he basically dropped his weapon and just carried on running into the hotel and caused Mary Hell until he got up to the floor. And I'm trying to find... Um, Mike, where's two shooters um, question? What's in the book? There you go. Yeah, what's in the book? And then uh, anything juicy, I think, was the next next variation of it. I can come back to it. 
Okay, yeah. So for two shooters, what's in the book? It is genuinely sort of a, an analysis of the lies and exposing the truth because it's been four years nearly now and it needs to be told. And again, I don't just look at the incident itself. I look at um, the reports. I look, I look at everything. You know, I've examined everything and there are some parts... Um, Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, the, I'll come on to the, the Jeff, that is, I'll come on to the cart in a moment because that's an interesting point. Um, you know, I, I analyze every aspect of the investigation, the event itself, well, not, not so much the event, and, and, and I'll be quite honest, it really, my book probably focuses on the event for probably four or five pages. It's because uh, there, there are conspiracy theorists who believe it never actually took place which is quite bizarre and sickening. There are also conspiracy theorists who believe there were people in helicopters flying around and shooting people. There were apparently ninjas in the palm trees uh, and it was just crazy. So, you know, I also tried to spell a lot of the myths as well, two shooters. So I think you actually asked me about something about the officers on what you call cop corner. And, um, you know, in fact, that led me to um, find the uh, key... Uh, Key key piece of evidence to uh, substantiate Campos's wound in time. Uh, mm. because there is a way to actually figure it out uh, a lot more than inside because there are footage from inside the hotel which confirms the time he was shot. It's just figuring out what time the body cam was recorded because they've they've taken the time off. Um, oh, you're talking about the, um, the, oh, the editing of the uh, of the of the uh, the camera times. Yeah. Month? Yeah. Okay. Um, now back to uh, Jeff. Jeff Scott. Um, yeah, when the SWAT team got there, they were genuinely worried about the, the room service cart. And the police officers actually were also worried about the ones advancing up the hallway because allegedly it wasn't there when Campos initially got on the floor. Uh, it wasn't there apparently, according to Campos, until he must have left that hallway because he doesn't remember seeing it. Uh, but um, in fact, I posted on the Facebook page. Um, uh, yesterday, I think it was. Um, there it is. All right, let me just share this. Uh, share screen. Uh, that one. For those of you on YouTube, you're now about to see a screen. Um, let me turn on here. There you go. Come right, there you go. So a lot of people look at these pictures and say, well, what's the problem? Well, this one here on the left, number one, is from Sergeant Bitsko's body cam and for those on the facebook page if you look at the pictures uh that i posted yesterday it's actually on there this red circle actually shows a distorted image of the body cam uh, of the camera on top of the cart you see that nice big black thing sticking up uh so how campos missed that i have no idea and then this is the crime scene picture and i was actually walking mike through the other day when i was explaining some stuff to him to figure out when all this took place because this was flipped over by Sergeant Bitsko before just seconds before the breach. Uh, as you can see, the camera's up on sort of like a, a stand on the edge of the plate. And when it comes to take the crime scene pictures and the person moved the plate, they figured out they couldn't uh, get a clear enough picture. So they cut the tape, the packing tape off because you shoot or use packing tape to secure it and um, basically made it look as if it was there and didn't make it, didn't let anyone really know what really happened. Um, and when Campos was, um, stop showing that to let me show that now. When Campos questioned about it, oh, there you go, Mike's eating. Um, sorry, <laughs> I didn't realize. Um, I put that, I had ice cream in the bag. I forgot I had ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I got to eat it. Now tell uh, the camera so you guys don't have to watch me eat ice cream. That was funny. <laughs> um, you know, it was a genuine, um, you know, th there was evidence that was clear to see but it was never actioned on for various it does explain all this in the book i'm not going to give too much away because you went by the book um and it, it there is a very big and then that's another reason i'm doing the the videos on face uh youtube as well because there is just so much evidence that was omitted from the official version it's crazy and you know i did a video not long after the 32nd floor opened back up the 100 wing which is now the 57th floor i wasn't the first researcher to go up on there 
I will state that right now because me and Mike's had a bit of an issue over that. Um, but I was the first to record. Um, you were. <laughs> but again, apparently the floor wasn't open back up to the June, uh, June the 1st, I think they settled something like that. And I was there pretty much the next day. Um, so again, that, that's open for debate. Because um, what I've seen, um, Jeff has got quite a good point. He had a list of 100 anomalies. Um, I'll see your list and I'll raise it because I've got, I think, I've, I think I think I ended up just off the report alone about 576 anomalies. Um, then various other aspects. I think by the end of my initial phase of looking into the incident, I had over 3,000 anomalies, which were never explained. And I've tried to explain every one. Some of them coincide with others. Some of them don't. Um, why was the DEA never involved in the investigation? No. Vegas two no, why were they involved? Why or, were they involved? Yeah, they they were early on, like the first two or three yeah. days, but they so, they were not a part of. They were helping gather evidence. Yeah. Um, for uh, FBI, they were not. They were not operating on an official capacity. Yeah. And, and what a lot of people don't realize is, um, yes, I'll, I'll come on to the black bays in a minute, two shooters. What a lot of people don't realize is because of the scale of 1 October, it is obviously the largest mass shooting and the most deadliest. A lot of agencies were initially brought in because they didn't know what they were dealing with. So they had to cover every angle. I mean, there could have been um, drugs, drug, you know, drugs involved or whatever. Not, you know, it could have been complete different story so it's within i think it was about three days as mike said a lot of the agencies were just so peripheral they just helped out where they could and then when it was seen they weren't needed anymore they just dropped off and just walked walked away handed over what evidence they collected um and just let the actual agencies dealing with it um carry on with it so okay the vase and i've had a lot of arguments with this one uh, especially hmm. one specific. Oh, no, I don't think we. I don't think we've ever actually spoke about the vase, Mike. Um, so for those that don't know, I'm just going to do this for Facebook Live. When the shooter's room was searched, there was a black vase, a foam ball, and some artificial flowers found. And it was discovered it didn't belong to the hotel. And then it was later discovered that the shooter purchased them from the Walmart in Mesquite. And I've actually contacted Walmart's product department because I've got an inroad there. I've got a cop, I've actually got the exact same webcam as the shooter. And the reason he actually purchased the vase, the foam ball, and the plastic flowers was to, to basically camouflage um, the camera being on the cart. That generally was all, that's as simple as it is. A lot of people have read into a lot of things <laughs> and gone down the garden path. Mm -hmm. they, they really have. Um, it's like they all say that, um, you know, he had a. Um, a oh what was it a, a laser range finder in the room uh no he didn't nope he actually used google believe it or not uh what's is, is it google earth mike that you can measure yeah, on it was, it, uh, yeah it was google earth pro yeah and if you don't believe us go on to google earth pro and you will get the same dimensions if you measure it genuinely um so there were just saw a comment come up on facebook live uh what about the lack of flashes from the mandalay bay Okay, I'm now going to educate everyone because I'm sick of this argument. I've got the flash. <laughs> um, okay, when a person fires from a position, okay, if they stand right at the window with their muzzle out, you will see a flash because the little bit on the end of the barrel is called a muzzle flash eliminator or gas disperser. But it's designed to disperse the flash very, very rapidly from a firearm. If you get a hunting rifle and fire a hunting rifle, you'll see a nice big plume of smoke, a big fireball, so to speak. With a more modern weapon, on a tactical standpoint, it was designed to lessen the imprint, so to speak. Um, so the shooter wasn't only firing from the window, he was actually firing slightly back, about, I think about a foot back, I think it, it worked out to. So you really wouldn't see him much. You had the curtain wrapped around him, so he obscured the light behind him. This, again, is all proven evidence. If you look at the curtains, there's scorch marks. There's all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, well, we did actually get – there's a couple of uh, videos that we were able to, you know, digitally enhance and uh, we're able to find the flash. So there's yeah. two that we got that from. Plus, we have 
I can't remember the guy's name. Does anybody remember the guy that actually had the muzzle? Wasn't necessarily the flash, but you can see the gas discharging from it. I have that on my channel. Um, but that was the, the the coup de gras of all of them, the uh, of showing at least that coming out of the window. And people were measuring it. That They were saying it was the wrong floor and stuff like that, but they were not doing the perspective right of the building. But we superimposed it and got it. So. I would just like to make a note here, because yep. this is specifically for one person who will know they are once I mention this. I'm not going to mention the guy by name. Um, apparently, by the way, this guy is a, not only a gun fanatic, he's awesome with firearms. Um, apparently, I got the terminology wrong. It's a, what, what was it again? Was it a flash disperser, as you called it? Um, uh, flash suppressor? Yeah, that's, um, I, this guy's awesome. Um now, all they had was muzzle brakes, right? He didn't have any flash suppressors. No, they did. No, they all did. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. It's terminology, Mike. Um, yeah. Terminology. Well, the muzzle brake and the flash suppressor are two different things. So, yeah. <clears throat> so um, uh, point blank through the teeth rattling around the skull and not exiting. No, there was another one before that. Hang on. I've got one on here, actually. Uh, why? When no, the body was found, it looked like he had. A body strap for ammo. Um, I think you mean a bandolier, maybe. Um, if I remember rightly, Mike, when we spoke to Eric, didn't he mention there were the the, the shooter was known for wearing uh, like a fanny pack? Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't recall seeing any. I don't. Yeah, I don't recall there. that being on the inventory though. Um, again, there's a lot of people who have seen a lot of things on the body. Um, but again, it's just genuinely, it's, it's just the way things, things were hanging, um, or his clothing looked, um, why was he wearing gloves? Genuinely, because that, that one I can answer, that, yeah. that one I can answer. Mike, can um, I just jump in a second? Yeah, it's, on the, it's on the Facebook live. So basically I'll give you the short answer. Mike, if you want to watch this later, I'll upload it onto my Facebook page. Okay. The shooter had very sensitive skin and always wore gloves. I mean, he used to buy how many packs, Mike? He he would buy them a case at a time from Home Depot. It was the same yeah. same box. He, you know, you bought them a case or you know they're they're ten to a box, and he bought them yeah. two or three boxes at a time. Okay, um, yeah. So he brought two or three boxes at the same time. Uh, the strap went from his shoulder across his chest. Ah, okay. Yes, the okay. This actually was picked up in the crime scene pictures. Um, let me just see if I've got this. A lot of people have questioned why the shooter never had much bruising on his body from the amount of rounds he was firing. Uh, I'm just going to come out with this because I've seen this question commented, uh, this thing asked a load of times. Uh, photos. Where's that crime scene photo? Jesus. <clears throat> you can never find it when you want it. <laughs> uh, it's the ring. Um, and for those who are interested, the fourth screw from the bracket in the, on the fire door was found in the master bedroom by the, by the drill he was using a lot on there. Okay. So I should, just thought I'd share that all with you. Um, why do I have loads of pictures of maintenance carts? Just want to explain that one. Uh, oh, I know why I've got loads of maintenance carts. There we are. So let me just zoom in. This is for um, uh, found it bizarre that someone who was not. Uh, um, just to let everyone know the guy. Um, the shooter did actually practice quite often with his weapons. Um, that's what I was looking for. I was going to share the screen. Um, so this is mainly for um, Mike. You should be able to see a share for the thing. Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, there we go. Okay, so this is the uh, master bedroom, the desk. This item right here is a shooting pad. Um, which he used because he expected to fire over 6,000 rounds that night and he didn't want to destroy his shoulder that quickly, as horrible as it sounds. But that is genuinely what he used to lessen the impact on his shoulder. It does work to a certain degree, but not to the best of um, everyone's liking. Uh, but that's basically long and short of it. I also missed another question on... Um, yeah, there, there is a... Um, uh, did he actually smash out the whole window? No one heard it. He, again, it's hard to know exactly how much of the window he smashed out originally. 
there's a fair chunk of it at least uh, because by the next morning there was a lot more glass missing um and um I'm glass right here. <laughs> yeah, Mike's got some glass right there, actually. So if everyone goes on to uh, YouTube right now on 5 by 5 News, you're about to see some glass from the shooter's window that he carefully borrowed from the Mandalay Bay grounds about two years after it all happened, Mike? Oh, no. No, within 20 years. On the 23rd day, I got a whole bunch of it. So, yeah, so that's how well they cleaned up the crime scene. Um, so there was another one. Uh, you mentioned something about the carpet not being replaced. Can you elaborate? There you go. There's a piece of the glass. Um... Jeff, I'm going to answer that one in a second. This uh, is good piece. So, yeah, the carpet basically was never replaced in the hallway. Uh, I actually found that out purely by chance when I went there and got up onto the floor, walked down the hallway and suddenly realized when I sent a... Didn't I send you a picture, Mike? And I suddenly... When you in the seconds, hallway? Yeah. And I happened to look at the picture and think, this is odd. I've seen this somewhere before. And then me and Mike spent the next two and a half hours mm. trying to compare pictures. Yeah, we had a, we're on the phone quite a bit. Yeah, and genuinely, um, we were. I was running back up to the floor taking pictures of certain areas because we were in doubt. And then when I went back down, we were comparing it to the basic different parts of the report. And you know, and then I found out, you know, we discovered it was definitely the same carpet. Um, it's actually the same light fittings I found out, Mike. Yeah. Yep, same light fittings. Um, but the car the carpet in the room is different. The carpet in the room is no longer there. Yeah, and that was um, um that was sent to Quantico, Virginia to yeah. um, be housed, where it's still now there to this day. Um but yeah, genuine in fact, I'll tell you what, Mike. Um let's do this. Uh, let me get a good picture of the um yeah, there you go. Here we go. Let's show a picture of the room as it is now. Well, the floor as it is now. You going to show that? Just the oh, floor. Okay. Just the just the just the wall. Okay, because I, I thought you were going to. You, you no. got to be careful. <laughs> um, so this is genuinely the old one three five right there. Yep. Um, if I zoom in, you can just see there and there. No, sorry, there. But the door used to be. Sorry, mm -hmm. no, it's, it's it's a lot easier to see when you're actually up there. Um, you can just see the join there. You can zoom in closer really, if you can. Yeah, really, really great craftsman, right? You know, you put this up there. You can genuinely tell. I mean, genuinely, when you go there, Mike. In fact, this here, right there. Mm -hmm. You see that? Yeah. Okay. Um, that there is on the crime scene sketch. That is uh, impact number 16. I'm still there, huh? And it's still there. They just literally put some, as you'll see when we go up to the floor, they literally just put some putty on there. Um, but yeah, if you look at the carpet, that's the carpet there. Um, and have I got a, no, uh, yeah, but yeah, so. You can all go and get two screens if you you know go and compare it later on, but that's genuinely the same carpet. Um, how did I find that out? Quite interesting, because um, there was still um, fragments in the floor. In fact, by the um, shooter's room, um, one three five, someone used an industrial sander floor sander because there's a nice little divot. Uh, why would he buy a bulletproof vest and not wear it? Well, there was never a bulletproof vest actually found in the room. And the bulletproof vest actually was purchased, I can tell you now, because I, I forgot to tell you this. Um, so the bulletproof vest was purchased back in 1991. And for those interested in uh, 1992, you may remember the Rodney King riots. Um, the shooter were, had an apartment complex at the time in the area. That everyone knew the tensions were mounting up, so he went out and brought a rifle and a bulletproof vest, like thousands of other business owners, and stood on the roof of his apartment complex to protect, to protect it. And many people believe that's what gave him the idea for the mass shooting. Genuinely, there was a story in the time at the Times, uh, I can't remember which papers I'll have to dig it out, who genuinely said this was the, where he got the idea from. Um, 
any ideas why you never saw any body cam for 134? Yes, there is body cam for 134. It's on release. Can't remember, but there is body cam for 134. Um, if not, I do have a copy of body cam for 134. It's not actually on the search when they initially went into the room, but the uh, Bitsco went in the room about two seconds later. Um, yeah, it wasn't in there for long, though. Is, is, you're talking about the body cam that was, it was kind of like went in, darted around, and came yeah. right back out. Yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, listen, there was only one shooter, okay? I know a lot of people believe there was two. Um, I was having this conversation the other day with someone who's actually probably watching the live stream right now. And um, basically, um, with, with the rate of fire, people did believe there was two. Even experienced combat vets who were in the venue, um, police officers and all sorts, genuinely believe there was two shooters. Um, okay. Let's go! Let's go! Oh, yeah. Someone's having a fight somewhere, Mike. Yeah, I'm in, a, I'm in the hotel lobby oh, thing yeah. here. Okay, I'm still a bit confused about Livermore's being visible so early. Um, really? Um, um, I, can, I can answer that one. Um, liver mortis is not like rigor mortis or it's one, you know, one of the mortises. And there was a lot of information that was put out by Paladin that was false information. Okay. It was based on some accurate timelines, but only with one study. Uh, liver mortis can start as early as 20 minutes. So his saying that it was X amount of time was incorrect. But I will say that some of the pictures that we saw were taken quite a bit later. Yeah. Um, and if everybody remembers, the first person to come out to say that there, the body was moved was me. Um, and I did that because we I saw two pools of blood. And because I'm colorblind, I have to actually do the color correction inside Adobe Photoshop using the numbers of the color. And when I did, I noticed there was a difference. I'll update you in a second. Sorry, Mike, I was just taking so, anyway, so. Hmm? Go on, carry on. so when I noticed there was a difference in the color of the shades of the blood, that's when I came back, looked at it, contacted um, uh, Dr. G, medical examiner, if everybody remembers that, uh, remembers her. Uh, she was a friend of mine, and she uh, told me that the, the blood, as soon as it um, touches or as soon as air touches the blood, it starts changing the iron in the blood, which makes the blood basically red, and then it goes through different oxidation, oxidation periods. Based on that, we were able to determine that the blood patterns were done about 45 minutes or more apart. And that's when I made the assertion that uh, there's two different times of the pulse of blood happening. So someone moved the body. It took, what, a year before we got the Matchco police statement. And that's when he admitted that he had pulled the, the blood. The blood on the chest was also or part of most of it was also from when he leaned him forward, the blood came out onto the chest when, and that's when everybody thought that he was shot in the chest okay. from before, but that was blood from Matchko moving him. Anyway, so just, that was a quick one. So for those on Facebook, the question was asked about liver mortis and Mike just gave a 10 minute spiel on why the body was different, why the blood was different colors. Um, but basically it's all to do with science and someone got the timeline wrong. Um, because again, there's been a lot of researchers who claim to be experts in a lot of fields and absolutely know nothing. And so I'm just letting people know I'm still here because I've just dropped down to four people from I think there was like six or no twelve at one point. Um, yes, there were two notes found in the room. It was never disclosed in the final report, only in the preliminary report. Uh, the first one was is what's become known as the famous bullet drop calculations, and the second one was a note telling him to unplug the phones. He literally wrote a note to say, "Don't forget to unplug the phones," because again, he had a lot. There was a lot he was planning for, and uh, you know, it's just one of those minor things that people would forget about in a situation like that, I would imagine. So, there, there were um, that's the only two notes ever found in the room. Um, so yeah, they rolled him and just let's make sure there's um, I think Mike, I've missed a comment, I missed a question somewhere. Uh, possibly, let me go back up here. What was the reason on the app? Uh, why was if, the if we miss any of the questions? Yeah, just if we do skip and we've gone like two or three questions past your question, please type it again. That just means I was distracted because I've, I've got Afghanistan going on in the more, in the other area here, so I'm trying to uh, keep my eyes on that. I think it was from Vegas Two Shoes, mate, about the body cam footage from one three. 
full. Yeah, he um, wanted us to, to show it. I don't have – I'm on my laptop, yeah, so I I'm don't just, have – I'm just making sure because don't forget, someone – when they released Bitsco's body cam footage, it was in like 17 different segments. Um, but I'm just seeing if I've got the one where I think it was L LVSA that had put it all together. Um, no, that's I'm looking for breach, breach stairwell. Um, where is it? And again, all this will be posted on the Facebook page as well. Uh, oh crap! Oh crap! What's up? Hang on. Where did that go? Hang on, mate. I've um. <laughs> you delete and everything that's over there. What are you doing? I'm just man? trying to move things around and trying to so I can keep screens as free. And I've got yeah, to get. I've got to get another screen. Um, you want to look like 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 my setup with you, like damn knock center and landing planes and yeah. shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, there is. I will dig out the footage for. Um... Yeah, okay. it does just take us too long to find that. But but we yeah. we can on the next one. What, what I'll try to do is re we'll try to put down questions we weren't able to answer yeah. here because of the time situation. Yeah. Um, get also, if, if anyone's got a um, any questions, message Mike or myself for when we're in Vegas. And I, I think we should aim to do like a two hour show in Vegas, Mike. Oh, well, yeah, we'll do. Yeah, I'll, I'll go all night long. I'll sit down and talk to. Hey, I'm doing gambling, so you can, uh, you know, if you want to talk to everyone all night long, I'm gambling. Um, <laughs> Those are fellows. Right, so the crime scene pictures. There's been a lot of talk about this. Uh, Mick Burns just asked me on Facebook, why do they all look staged? It's genuinely like this, people. Okay. When the police initially entered the room, the initial breach team moved certain things. Um, mainly they kicked the the, the uh, revolver out the shooter's hand. They also moved a few items to get past places. And then when Sergeant Machko was sent into the room to search for ID again, things were moved. Um, and then it took five and a half hours, I believe, for a warrant to be obtained because in the US to search a crime scene, the police have to have a warrant from a judge. If not, anything they find is inadmissible. And Again, it was not the most secure crime scene in the world, so it is believed that there were people trying out on the circus. Um, and by the time our BNPD got back in there, it, everyone had taken lots of photos and all sorts of stuff, and then they were all leaked to the media, and it got crazy. But that's why there was a lot of odd-looking things in a lot of odd places. Like, there was objects in certain places where there was no dust, and certain things like that. Um, then what is... Hang on, what's the one you just put up? I'm also confused on why there were more obvious bullet holes in the east coast of the ip box seats investigate six it's like this the way the shooter was firing was not uh, i think mike you worked out to be a figure of eight is that correct oh what his, his shot pattern was doing it like his barrel was doing like a figure of yeah eight. he's doing a figure eight uh, like okay like an infinity symbol yeah. pattern yeah so the bullets were going everywhere basically um it's as simple as that. Uh, hey, uh, the man running across the top of the Tropicana roof. Yeah, I've listen. I've seen this thing about the Tropicana. Um, it's been doing rounds now, I believe, for more times than. Yeah, I can probably help you on that one. Um, um, go ahead. Again, it's one of those things where I think Mike's done a lot more. Uh, Mike has done a lot more research in than me in certain respects, and then in other respects, I've done. Mike's done a lot out, outside the hotel, um, and I'm a little bit sketchy on that because <laughs> I didn't. I got there after the punch and so to speak and um i wasn't focusing on certain things outside the hotel i was more concerned with the immediate vicinity of the hotel and on top of that listen people were on rooftops everywhere it's vegas christ there's crazy things that happen in vegas every day of the week well this one's a little bit odd so i i know what he's getting at what happened was during um during the the security footage that we have from the top of mandalay bay um, the camera aiming out the shaky cam, if everybody remembers that, that's the northeast corner of Mandalay Bay. That camera was aiming at the Tropicana, monitoring the road that kind of goes uh, around the building on the inside part. Um, and there was a man that was seen dropping onto the. Huh? Mike's just, I'm just talking to Facebook at the minute. Oh, there's a man that you can that you see drop onto the roof and he runs across. Um, as you get to the other side of that roof, there's actually a staircase that goes down. If you ever go go there to the Tropicana, you'll see that there's stairs that go up to that little roof level. And you can literally just go up there and get on it. So he, to me, it looked more like an escape route, more like somebody shouldn't have been in a room and, oh, my God, something's going on. 
we're getting out of here. So, but as far as the individual, I don't think we ever determined who it was and whether or not it was anything. It was not related to the shooting. I know that. Yeah. Again, I just want to reiterate for people on Facebook. Um, you know, I, we're doing this on across two platforms, so it's quite hard to keep up with everything. Uh, and no, it wasn't. Uh, Scott, what's your no, it wasn't in reference to? Um, please elaborate because um, we are crossing feeds across, again, Facebook and YouTube. Um, there was someone who mentioned about the gloves. Oh, yeah, sorry, Penny. Uh, Pe sorry, London Penley. Um, you know, people have not really looked at what the shooter did himself and a lot of people have been distracted by the outside of the venue a lot of conspiracy theories and not many people have given the shooter a glance which is really odd in a sense because he was integral to the whole thing and uh and basically the guy genuinely wore gloves anyway but also he did a lot of test fires with his weapons it wasn't just like this was the first time you fired them this genuinely was um you know god knows how many times you've fired them and um so it's so i'm just looking there's some sort of um uh, yeah so basically someone's about the crime scene pictures not being staged again it was just the crime it was so chaotic that night um it was just a lot of things going on um it was just again there's a lot of things that were moved in the room because they needed to get immediate information for certain things um there are also officers who were assigned to look after the room at one point who genuinely walked around by the sounds went and just started moving things at random uh, there were bottles of water left everywhere uh it was a chaotic scene um you know uh the body cam footage from the four seasons uh i believe that's what everyone's referring to about there was apparently a shooter in the four seasons is that the one no i think just the, they did go up to there's a couple officers that went up to the four seasons yeah but i'm not sure if they uh they actually had body cams because there's quite a few that didn't including yeah you know hancock <laughs> can, can i just address this issue with the body cams okay people don't realize sure. that vegas had only been using body cams for a very short time I believe it was only about four or five weeks before the incident took place yep. and the, the rollout was not complete now a lot of the younger officers were trained on the use of body cams at the academy so they were more used to using them well the older officers weren't some of the senior officers some of the sergeants there is one sergeant that has seen her chat and turn your body cams on who was at the southwest corner of the venue i think vegas two shooters refers to that as cop corner um so a lot of the older officers didn't have body cams because either they didn't have them issued or they had them on and forgot to turn them on. Because again, it was a complete new system. It wasn't like they'd been using it for a decade. It, it, it had only been out two to three weeks. And for everyone's information, the body cams, every body cam that night was the Axon Flex 2. Um, there was, uh, let me just, uh, here we go. Let me share my screen so everyone can see. Oh, the setup? Yeah, it's uh, that one there. So share. So. Yeah. Well, Mike. Yep, it's coming. Okay, so this is the time stamp watermark, as it's called. So for those on Facebook, I will post the picture momentarily. Um, so this is the time stamp watermark on the Axon Flex 2. This is your date. Okay, this is your time. That's what the T stands for. Now, this is uh, Zulu time, which is the central unit coordinated time for the world. It's based off GMT time, but it doesn't distinguish between winter and summer uh, alterations. This is the model of the camera that was being used. And this is the individual serial number assigned to that camera and that officer. So that is as simple as it is. So if you see these in future, and there's a Z at the end, it stands for Zulu, more commonly used by the military. Yep. So let's say they were all Axon Flex 2. There was no deviations, um, and that comes into it was a two part Axon Flex 2, the main body unit, and the camera that a lot of them had on their shoulder, which is why you get a lot of views of the chin. Um, some 
Um, some um, some get really odd angles, actually. It really gets weird. Um, so let me just post that for those on Facebook. Um, there you go. There you go. That's the one. Slide seven. Okay. Any more questions from anyone? Oh, look at that. New background. Um, any <laughs> questions? Uh, was the timestamps on all the body cams all consistent? Okay. The timestamps on the body cams, um, again, they were all preset by GPS time. However, there's a little, a little bit of a drawback with GPS time. When, um, when a body camera went into a building for a prolonged period, the time would slow down, the, the counter would slow down, so to speak. And this has been tested numerous times because I do have an Axon body cam, uh, Flex 2 body cam. Um, in, some, in some situations it didn't because again, they were quite close to the outside of the building or it wasn't thick with steel and everything else. So the signal could just about penetrate. But there were instances where when the officers went down to the depths of the hotel or different places, it just couldn't receive a signal. So the internal clock would still work, but it would be slightly slower than it should be. So that's why we use the master time of the LVMPD catalog to sync all the times up. And the way you do that is just watch the body cam, wait for a radio message, look at what time it occurred, and everyone's happy. <laughs> and it's as simple as that. Uh, which, uh, there was no Saudi prince in the hotel that night. No, not at all. I think that's about the 50th time I've heard that one. Uh, <laughs> listen, listen, I don't know why that one has such such legs and traction. It just it seems to stick. Um, I saw yeah, that one the other day somewhere. Um, yeah, I remember, remember the, the one guy was a security guard, but he went down there and because he kind of looked like somebody, everybody yeah. thought it was him. Uh, but no, it was a, it was an actual security guard uh, when mm -hmm. they were taking the, uh, the, uh, the back gurney thing or whatever into, uh, uh, what were they going into? It was Trop it wasn't Tropicana. It was, yeah, it was Tropicana that they were taking that into. But um, they were going in to pull servers out of there. And also there was a person that thought he was shot in the back of his head. It was in yeah. one of the rooms and all that. I'm just looking at make. I missed a comment somewhere, and I can't see where it is, Mike. Uh, uh, oh, I know what he's on about. It's not a Saudi prince. Not a Saudi prince. Yeah. Um, there will be a expose on that. I don't know when that's going to be, um, because there's certain things that I have to account for on that. And yeah, we might not be able to reveal one of. I think one of the areas. Yeah, I mean, it's just a hard thing at the moment. There's. So the trouble is a lot of people have not been spoken to in official channels because no one wants to get involved in it in a sense because there are too many conspiracy theorists running around. And what's happened in the past is when people have been willing to speak on the from the official side of things off the record, it's been twisted, turned, misinterpreted, and um, um Basically, they were sick and fed up of it. There is a famous producer that was running around Vegas at one point who upset a lot of people by releasing the names with their evidence, which wasn't quite funny because uh, um, have I reviewed all the body cam footage? I've reviewed a lot more body cam footage than I care to count right now, and it would account for at least, I don't, I dread to think how many hours. I think um, there's... Uh, 648 hours or so. I may be wrong, but I believe it's around 600 and some odd yeah. hours that was released of the 1,200 or so hours that we believe exists. Uh, but um, but you, you've got the inside knowledge on that yeah. one. Yeah. There, there, there's not as many hours as people think. Um, it's about 1,000 hours total. Uh, there was a lot of body cam footage not released. Be well, Dave Newton's actually it has been cut. And that all goes down to the fact that Dave Newton's body cam gets a very clear picture of the room service car outside of 134. And once you see that picture, it's, it detracts away from the official narrative. So remember, the cover-up, and I'll be honest with you right now, the cover-up was to an extent that any evidence that contradicted the official narrative was never released in its entirety. Or they uh, That's why LVMPD genuinely fought so hard to block the release of evidence, because... There is so much evidence which contradicts the official narrative, it is unbelievable. Uh, for instance, Campos hearing the sounds of gunshots allegedly occurred after he got off the phone. Sorry, the drilling sound, shall we say, allegedly occurred after he got off the phone. Um, 
But no, it wasn't. It was whilst he was on the phone to Shannon Aylesbury, the security, uh, the facilities manager. Again, it's like people don't realize Shannon Aylesbury actually ended up on the floor by 12 minutes past 10. Because in the official version, it claims it was two armed security guards that ended up there. Well, this actually is the still image from the elevator uh, that Shannon Aylesbury, Hendricks, Varson uh, used on the night of 1 October to go up to the 31st and 32nd floors. So share that, Mike. There you go. So there is Shannon Aylesbury, the maintenance manager, Varsin, Hendricks, and three security managers right there. Uh, Varsin, Hendricks, and these three got off the elevator on the 33rd floor, and these two got off on the 32nd floor. It genuinely is simple as that, okay? So, but as you can see, this timestamp has also been masked because it confirms at what time um, Campos was shot because this was minutes well not even minutes after and um, this was about a minute and a half after he was shot this was recorded so um let me just stop sharing that um so i know just apart from gun finals this has not seen any evidence of any shooter of um Apart from gin, gunfire noises, has Mark seen any evidence of any shooting or people with GSWs? Um, what I've seen um, is neither here nor there in certain respects. What I know is totally different to the layman because I've seen a lot more evidence, I think, than most people. Um, but yeah, there is genuinely video of people being shot, and I don't recommend to watch it because it is not very nice. <clears throat> um, so, you know, oh, is, is, is Robomax one of these ones that it didn't happen, Mike? Yes. Okay, Robomax, let me assure you of one thing right now, buddy, it was a genuine attack. It genuinely happened. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close down the Facebook feed because it's getting quite complex on there and it's me talking back and forth. Everyone, if you want to continue watching, go over to 5 by 5 News. I can on... post the link on your page. Let me... Um... Yeah, go onto my page and post the link. So Mike Turber is now going to post the link to the live feed on YouTube. And it's going to be a lot easier. I don't even think we're friends on Facebook. No, because I don't like you. <laughs> I don't like you either. <laughs> I, I actually went to add you the other day, but I got... You know what it's like at the moment, Mike? It's just so distracting with everything. It's just... Yeah. I went to add you the other day. I think I sent you the link to the page. Is that correct? I'm sorry? No, I sent you the, the link I sent you to the, the Facebook page. page, to your page, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got you on that, on to the YouTube page, yes. Okay. So, right, I'm going to stop the live feed. Mike Turber is going to post a link on the page. So I hope to see you all on the live stream on uh, 5 by 5 And I promise next time all these issues will be sorted out. I will genuinely admit that tonight was right. down to me because... YouTube. Yeah, we literally got this up and running in like about four minutes. Five. I think <laughs> we literally did it with room to spare of about yeah, at, yeah, at three minutes until I had just walked in the door of yeah. this hotel. That's the reason why Mike was having his dinner whilst we were talking. Yep. Um, okay, so thank you for watching me on Facebook Live. I will be doing more shows next week when I'm in Vegas, and we will make sure all the kinks are ironed out before then. Actually, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna send you this link to your phone, and you can put it on your page real quick. Yeah, that's okay. fine. That's fine. That's there you go. Fine. That's fine. Okay, I've got that. Okay. Uh, save. Okay, that should be. Okay, I'm just. Welcome, seeing welcome Robo. Yeah, uh, Robo's been um, around for a while, and me and him go at it uh, quite a bit. We actually had a debate and everything on here. Um, but um, he's actually a good guy. He's very intelligent, but he's uh, in some form of denial about the the shooting and people actually getting shot and stuff like this. So, um, okay. you know, yeah. Um, right, I'm waiting just to get this thing to save. Let me go to this. Mike Turber. Copy. Two seconds, boys and girls. I'll be back with you. I'm just waiting for this video to save on my Facebook. And then get some feedback here. 
Uh, do you know that was a real shooting? Okay, safe can roll. Oh, man. I've been lucky so far, and I haven't lost anybody yet, but it looks like I'm getting close to you right here. Okay, so for those watching on uh, Create a Post, continue. Publish it, you damn thing. Okay, there you go. That should all now be happy and synced up. Let me just make sure that's all working, and I can get back to just one screen. <sighs> yep. Okay, let me just get to this. I just want to make sure this is going to the right place because um, it looks like it's been saved to uh, the wrong place. No, that's good. Okay. No, mate, it's, it's just, I'm just. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so RoboMax, genuinely it did happen. I'm going to readdress this because I've heard this quite often now. Um, if you really want to see the gravity of the situation, I can't. I will give Mike Turber the actual release number. You can watch that release, and if you genuinely believe after that it's false, um, I suggest you need to start looking inside your soul at what you've just seen. Okay. Well, he's a he's a moon landing denier and all that stuff too. So yeah. I just. I mean, I just kind of take that with a grain of salt. I, I try to, you know, people can believe whatever they want. Yeah. Where they cross the line is like what uh, Joe, whatever the hell his name was. Um, you know, that's why I went to his house when he while he was doing a live. Yeah. <laughs> um, there we go. So, yeah, it's it's genuinely there were. Um, <laughs> He's a typical Brit. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, um, you damn Brits, what's wrong with you? <laughs> um, I think I don't mean, hey, I have not actually said I've actually put that in my book just for you, Mike. I Are you serious? <laughs> yep, I, I was your interpreter. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I genuinely have put that in the book just for you on that one. Um, oh, thank you. I, I, um, I feel so special now. Um, that's what I was going to do. I think I actually know. Uh, yeah, you want to tell everybody about the, the book and when? Um, you yeah, know. so the book was meant to have been out for the fourth anniversary on the 1st of October. However, it's had to be delayed for one reason or another. We, I, well, I hope it will be out. Um, I believe the publication date we're looking at is, uh, let me get to the date, around the, between the 11th or the 18th of October. And um, it will be on Amazon store to start with in Kindle and paperback. And then I think it's on there for 90 days in exclusivity. And then it will be released into Barnes and Noble, I believe, for the ones that's picking it up. But I will post uh, the links. I'm sure Mike will also post the links. Um, so, you know, it's, it's genuinely an expose on conspiracy theories what LVMPD didn't publish. Uh, I actually show you how uh, to sh you know, narrow down the time of what Campos was actually shot based off the evidence that is out there. Um, and yes, uh, in, you know, I'm going to answer Robo right now. Um, <laughs> it, I genuinely do not look at things emotionally because it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. And objectively is the only way to look at evidence but a lot of people forget that a lot of the context of the evidence has been removed so when you look at a piece of evidence the context of that evidence surround that evidence isn't there because people are this is the one thing that surprises me okay campos had two police statements yet i mean how long has the evidence been out now two three years mike mm -hmm. but everyone always jumps on his one statement which is the one he gave to lvmpd if you truly want to know how he accessed the 32nd floor on the night of 1 October, look for his Henderson police statement. In fact, I'll tell you what, let's just show it now again. Yeah, you know, it. this is how objectively Robo, I look at evidence. Um, and this was a statement that he made when he was in the hospital, correct? 
this is yeah it's even got the time on there let me double check it's the right one yeah here we are here's the the famous statement from um share share screen and there you go here it comes there okay it so this is mandalay bay security guard the only person we know from mandalay bay security shot was campos on the 2nd of october 2017 at 235 hours in the morning this is the address of the mandalay bay for those that don't know this here is the officer taking the statement. This is the length of the statement. It really is brief. But if you go, um, uh, here are, so on Sunday, October the 1st, 2017, at approximately 2200 hours, I was responding to hot SOS room using stairwell, attempting to open fire door on 32 floor, 100 wing. It was blocked off, went down a floor to use another wing stairwell. That genuinely is, has been in the public domain for that long and no one's picked up on it. Um, you know? Yeah. Not even the media picked up on that. In fact, this is a surprise. In fact, not even the detectives who ran the investigation knew anything about that statement. That yeah, they, is started, one, they started from the one in the police station. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. That one genuinely they didn't know about until I started showing it around. Um, and why was that is because when it went to LVMPD, apparently it got lost in a myriad of paperwork, yet it was managed to be scanned in. So thankfully it's in there, but that's how we genuinely access the 32nd floor, virus stairwell. The footage from the 33rd floor elevator was actually recorded between 7 p.m. and 8.20 p.m. That's why the timestamps had to be masked on all the footage, because if they masked it on one piece of footage, it had to be masked on the other piece of footage. Mm-hmm. And I'll give you a bit more of an insight. If you look at the service elevator footage, the reason that timestamp was masked is because Campos entered the 30th floor at a round, well, between 9.35 and 9.37 p.m. How do I know that? I'm going to show you right now, boys and girls. Again, this is all in the public domain. This statement right here contains all the information people need on, believe it or not, the security log. This genuinely is the person that did the security log that night and the officers interviewing him had the log in their hand when they're asking him questions and pointing out the times. Yep. But yet no one's picked up on it. Okay. So if you want to call yourself an actual researcher, and I'm, I'm going off on one now because genuinely Robo has really got to me. <laughs> you need to look at what you're looking at. And not many people, because everyone is focused on these conspiracy theories, which is, has been causing problems. LVMPD, I will honestly say it right now, I've not helped the situation. So, you know? Well, they had to work everything into the narrative yeah. that was constructed for them by obviously oh, yeah, them. So, um, and, and yeah. that that, be, that became an issue. And one of the things Catherine Lombardo said on Tucker on the show that, that I was on was the, um, the managed the timeline was managed yeah and did you? that's and that's that's a that was a very effective way of, of stating that right um, and the reason sorry sorry to put in mike but the reason it was managed is because of a simple law in the united states it's the only country that has it but it's called or well, latin for it, i can never pronounce it correctly it's called respondent superior in other words let the superior answer and what this is is a law which governs if an employee is negligent during their working day, it's the employer at fault. Mm -hmm. But also in Nevada, it goes one step further because it's not only the employer at fault or the company, it's also the employee. So they're both legally held accountable. So when it comes to that, it was in both MGMs and Campos's best interests to work together. His bonus was he got a shit ton of cash and, um, a nice condo or two condos mm -hmm. they settled for less than a billion dollars everyone's happy on that front it genuinely mm -hmm. is that simple of what was being covered up because as you will see in the book i will use my words very carefully here the shooting could have either been averted completely with minutes to spare or could have been stopped within two minutes of it starting had campos done his job correctly I had anyone done their job? Yeah. No, yeah. no, no, no. So, uh, we, we're, we're talking about on the way to Vegas, but genuinely, yeah. Campos was a linchpin for everything. That's yep. why he has his own chapter in the book. Because his actions that night could have genuinely averted what went on had he done his job properly. So, um, 
I think we've lost some people because of my little rant. But no, it, it's right. I think I was I was looking at Claire's thing. I didn't know if she meant cover your ass for CYA or see you later. So yeah. no, I thought I'm not sure. <laughs> um, you know, and it, yeah, pretty much Claire. I mean, if that's what's cover your ass, and yeah, it was cover your ass. Um, you know, and it's you know with, with Robo saying you know look at things objectively. I do. I'm about the only person other than Mike that I've met that actually does look at evidence objectively. I've met people that have got so much evidence they're sat on that they've obtained through one reason or another, and they don't know how to interpret it, and they make little conspiracy theories up. It's unbelievable. Uh, and, and here's something important. Whenever you have, this is a scientific process. When you gather evidence and you're gather, gathering it in such a way that you have to not include a person. In other words, we're not getting yeah. eyewitness testimony because eyewitness testimony is the worst. But what, so when you're looking at physical evidence, if things change for some reason or another, then you come back to change. It's called the scientific method. So and you change your you have a hypothesis, then you try to see if everything fits the hypothesis, then you come back in and correct it accordingly. Should things make that change? Mm -hmm. An example, when the when the when I looked at the shooting, I had the the uh, the audio that I got from Carlos's uh, video, the one that everybody says uh, Ace, Ace, was a, um, was Ace of Space, whatever it was. And um, I believed in the beginning that the first shots were towards the tanks. But I found out after I started analyzing the audio that they weren't. That was the same time that uh, Nutra, Hunter, whatever that guy's name was, the um, uh, uh, whatever that army guy was that came out and said, he's going to show us where the shooters are. And all that. And I was very amazed to see, oh, he's going to actually show us. And the way he was doing it was correct. But, you know, trying to determine the, 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 where the bullets are landing based on the sounds that you hear. But the problem is, is math was wrong and everything else is wrong. So when I got into it, that's when we started figuring out where it actually came from. And, you know, Mr. Visual came along and put that in the video thing. But the, the, the thing is, is that you have to correct your course. You can't put so much weight on your evidence to the point where if it changes down the road, you don't change it because your ego won't let you do that. Yeah. Um, that's where some of this had in the beginning with the people that were researching from home. Um, they stuck to their stories, just like the helicopter theory and all this other crap. Yeah. yeah and it's, it is, it is plagued. I mean, a lot of, some of these conspiracy theories even made it into the media. Yeah. The media genuinely ran with some of these conspiracy theories. Yep. So what you get is this, this situation where you've got fact overshadowed by fiction conspiracy theories rule in the day um and genuinely people run in after trinkets of information they believe to be genuine because again a lot of people who gave evidence to the mpd weren't being entirely truthful it wasn't just campos there was a um allegedly a statement from a girl who said the shooter came to my store in the hotel i think it was a luxor at such and such a date such and such a time to buy an eyeglass repair kit okay now I will say this is for the detectives. Every time they were told something that could have been verified by CCTV, they went back and checked. They could not find this footage, okay? Which was highly unusual because it had nothing really to do with the shooting on the, the night in question. It was to do with a few days before. So me and Mike were discussing this the other day. And, you know, obviously the eyeglass repair kit, everyone's always assumed was to take out the hard drive. However, Within the room, there was already tools and screwdrivers to actually take the hard drive out if he so wished. But critically, when he actually Googled how to remove the hard drive, he wasn't even at the hotel. He was nowhere near the hotel. So why would he wait to take the hard drive out until he got back to the hotel to go and buy an eyeglass repair kit? I've got tools. an idea. <laughs> <He had laughs> I'll, wait. I'll wait for that one. <laughs> he had enough tools in his room and he had enough tools at his house. Evidence, you, you know, the evidence caches oh. prove that the screwdrivers he had at both locations were more than ample to remove the hard drive. Well, do you think of point A and point B is a big distance? Oh, no yeah. one's going to spend millions of dollars searching for a little object. Genuinely, that's how big the friggin' hard drive is. He chucks it out on the highway. Good night, Vieta. The police aren't going to go spend millions of dollars, millions of dollars to look for it because it's irrelevant. You know. People think it had the tax information on. It genuinely did not have the tax information on. That was found on one of the other computers. I think what you're going to find is on that hard drive is going to be um, blueprints for its attack. Yep. Oh, no. Genuinely. Because he was such an egotistical prick, and I'll say it honestly, that he wanted to keep everyone in suspense. 
and this is the way he did it. This is his final hurrah to the casino industry. Okay, he liked to make people think he was smarter than everyone else, but actually he wasn't. And this is a way he wants to prove it. Because investigators never actually bother looking for the hard drive in the first place, because it's just so vast. What happened to the girlfriend? Oh, good, we're changing the subject. Mary Lou, um, Danley. Mary Lou Danley, she now lives somewhere in uh, California. Uh, if you actually Google her name and uh, California, you actually find there was a recent article made, uh, published on her. It even shows you the house she now lives in. Um, yeah, she's no longer with her with her sister. Um, no, was sister um, or daughter? Yeah, no, kind of brain fried. No, it was a daughter. Yeah, daughter. the daughter. Yeah, the sister was. There was just there in the daughter in the states, wasn't it? Well, yeah, the sister lived here. Yeah, this is this, this is the daughter. I'm not my yeah. brain for it on that one. Um, so yeah, that's where she is now. Um, again, was she involved in the attack? No, because she wasn't even in the country. Did she know anything about it? Mm, hard to say. You know, I mean, me and Mike had this conversation the other day again, and we do talk a lot on these theories. Um, if someone that I knew, I was having them load thousands of rounds of ammunition into magazines. I later saw dancing around a hotel room looking at different angles from a window. I would be um, quite curious to what they were doing. Yep. Yeah. Mm, no, she wasn't. No. I mean, how many clips do you have to fill? You're sitting there. Yeah. And you got like 200 of them. You're like, when you're... When you're target practicing, can't you just reload them while you're out there? Yeah, no, you know, some, yeah. something would have clicked if if it had been normal. I, I, my personal belief is that she had some sort of idea that something yeah. was going on, but she may not have honestly knew, known what. Yeah. But I mean, you'd, you'd have to be a complete utter moron to not think something, and she was not a complete utter moron. Yeah. But who knows? Um, that's the that's the one interview okay. that uh, no one's got. Can I just jump on yeah. this Vegas two shooters? Please. There was a uh, Vegas two shooters about Mary Lou Danley and having ISIS friends on her Facebook. Right, I'm going to settle this once and for all. Mary Lou Danley did not have any ISIS friends on her Facebook. Do you not believe me? Check the evidence. There is a CIA log in the evidence. They have no reason to lie. The CIA did submit the evidence that there was no known terrorist friends on Mary Lou Danley's Facebook. The reason she deleted it Mm -hmm. was simply because she knew the media were going to swarm around her. Simple as. As we've seen, most pictures in the public domain of the shooter has actually come from the Facebook. Um, I think one's come from the family at least, Mike. Is that correct? No. Uh, the one where the one where Eric was in the room and he held up the picture, yeah. yes, when CBS did that, okay. uh, the, the only other interview other than mine. But the... Um, the other picture where he's holding the shot glass and stuff like that, which um, it was on Facebook. Yeah, um, I keep in mind too. There's a picture on Facebook that was actually of her cousin, or man, I wish uh, uh, Chris was in here because um, he's. Can I, just share, can I just share this? Because this is actually Stephen Paddock at a very young age. Um, I don't even think you've seen this, Mike. He wants to know where the, the CIA uh, log is for that. That is Stephen Paddock at a very young age. Yep. That was one of the <clears> first <throat> photos of him taken in uh, Sun Valley, California at his elementary school, which alludes to the name of me right now. What was, his, what was the elementary school, Mike? Was it Mary? Oh, I don't remember that. I, I don't remember the name of it. but Yeah, but that's genuinely one of the first elementary school pictures of uh, Stephen Paddock. Yep. That was sent to me by, I can't remember who that was sent to me by, that was um, the guy that, that wrote that one article that went to school with him, I believe, because he had the picture of him in the uh, uh, the the tennis outfit looking thing or whatever, and then yeah, in checkers or whatever. Okay, Paddock did not have Instagram. He did start up an account, but it was never really functioned. And Danley's Facebook was sequestered by FBI, CIA, and every a, a, it was an alphabet soup of agencies that requested the um, access to it. What was on there was not relevant. There was nothing on there that was relevant. I can tell you that now. I have seen evidence about the Facebook after it was analyzed, but there was nothing on there. Um, you know, that could even make a tangible connection to ISIS. Just remember, with ISIS attacks, and this is the big way to disprove it, is um, let's look at it this way. There well, was here's no. <laughs> There was no, they, well, yeah, I mean, there was no, um, 
no, was just no pre-call to uh, Allah, as they, I think there's a technical term for it. There was no ISIS flags found in the room. There was no martyrdom speech. There was nothing. There was nothing. Um, you know, it's it's that simple. You know, and everyone's trying to make tangible connections because this is the honest answer. No one believes that this person was capable. I mean, when you listen to people that knew him, they genuinely, I mean, there was one report of a person who genuinely believed this guy was the first ever victim when his photo was shown. Yeah. Because he was a complete different person to what he was that night. And the reason everyone thinks this is because of there is no motive, allegedly. Now, well, the, keep in mind, too, the, the ISIS connection was because ISIS actually, on two yeah. separate occasions, three. stated that they, well, it was, it was three the two through the same channel. Um, and that was the official channel that they normally would put their, uh, you know, their claims of, of doing the dirty deeds, so to speak, uh, through. So that was that was one thing that people believed that they, they had never before said they have done something and didn't do it. But obviously, this was one of those. They didn't do it. They just they just wanted to be a part of yeah, you know, it, the largest mass shooting in U.S. history. Yeah. It was the worst mass shooting in American history. Of course, they wanted to have the claim for it. I mean, they're, they're enemies of America, well, the Western world in general. Not just of America. I mean, ISIS-inspired attacks happen all over the world. Um, yeah. Not just in America. Um, I'm dealing with them right now. So. But yeah, there's no, there is no connection whatsoever between Stephen Paddock and ISIS, Mary Lou yeah. Danley and ISIS. There is nothing there. Mm. Okay. Uh, any more questions? Any more questions? We, uh, just to make sure we haven't missed anyone. Um, um, uh, Edward, if you, Afghanistan, Edward, if you are watching this show, call me right after I disconnect here. Uh, I'm not looking at. Same with Ryan. <laughs> um, uh, I don't think there's anything else on there, Mike. Um, uh, no, I'm scanning back through. Um, let's see. Now, now, this was an ad hoc show we had to put together real quick, too. Uh, just on the next show, we'll I'll put it out there quite a few days in advance. That way, yeah. if you can think of questions, you can come back to that page and, and put down the questions in the comment section. And then we'll make certain that we have not only the question answered, but if it relates to, say, like body cam footage or, or actual yeah. evidence we need to produce and show, we can do that and actually have it set up that way. So it'll be a lot better. So just make certain the next time you see we put up a, a show announcement that you uh, that you if you have any questions, especially ones that bring up obscure or odd evidence that that you just need covered. We've got it. Um, yeah. The two of us will have it and we'll be able to cover that for you. Yeah, we just need to know. I so say this was on the fly tonight. Um, there was a few technical issues and a few things which, you know, um, Mercenary terrorists, so, okay. Thank you, Stable Flow. That's awesome information right there. Highly um, critical to um, one October mass shooting. Um, uh, let me say something real quick, too. Um, as, every, as my friends know, some of you may not know, I am running a team of people that are exfilling uh, uh, Afghans. Um, in the beginning, we thought it was only going to be a couple of days or a few days of doing this. It has turned into a nightmare. I, I now at the present time have over 600 people on my manifest and I just received another 1700 tonight. So it's a ridiculous mess. Um, it's consuming an inordinate amount of time. So that's why I haven't been able to do uh, quite a few things. I can't just, Jesus, I lost my phone. I can't discuss a lot of what's going on there uh, because we're doing active things. Uh, but I will try to become a little bit more active and, and, and at least get some information out because now we're having to ask for help. Uh, this is the first, you know, there's a lot going on. So um, I wish I could show you what's on my phone right now. But um, anyway, so that's why. Uh, but look towards uh, this and I'll make the time when I'm in Vegas to do that. Mm -hmm. um, well, and again, that's it. So, yeah. <laughs> ahead, Mark, I'm sorry. That's not probably. Um, so, yeah, as there's no more questions, there doesn't seem to be any more, any more for any more before we close out. All right, guys, I'll hang around for another minute if you've got anything. And uh, just let me know if you got questions for for me on anything. I, I'll try to answer that. Uh, Vegas Two Shooters, you had a whole Let's bunch. Let's just hang around for 30 seconds, Mike. 
Yeah, go ahead. No problem. No, no, seriously. I mean, if there's any more questions, we'll take it for the next 25 seconds, 24. All right. 23. Any questions at all? Any questions about anything? Test my knowledge. Trivia. We could do that. You can ask any question in the world to see if Mark gets the answer or me. Uh, it was outside <laughs> of one October. I really don't know much. <laughs> Especially at the moment. Jeez. Yeah, okay, then. Tell. Well, I'm going to sign off because, okay. uh, you know, thank you very much for joining us. Hang on. Yep. Uh, thank you, Claire. Oh, by the way, if anyone is in Vegas next week, um, there may be some uh, presentations taking place at a place called McMullen's. It's an Irish bar. It serves really good food, really good drink, and uh, I will definitely be there sometime. Thoughts on the bank account? Uh, it was a bank account that you used to transfer money. So what? I think they remember they put the hold on there. There was a everyone was calling it a terrorist hold. Oh, I think, okay. So I think our right. friend, our mutual friend, remember the first words out of your mouth when you called me for the first time? Oh yeah. Okay. Our mutual friend. So let me let me clear up something about a bank account for people <laughs> that don't understand. So when you have a certain amount of money in the bank, um, um that you are scrutinized by the IRS a little bit more, but when you send certain amounts of money to like the Philippines, because it's a known hotspot for hiding money, um, and the Cayman Islands, typically they tend to pull a financial, uh, it was called the, I can't remember the exact name of the whole, but it's basically the IRS to make sure you're not defrauding them with taxes. That's as simple as it is. Um, oh, Claire needs a scotch. Oh, obviously Claire's British then. Uh, mm. Claire, are you on the same group as I am on Vegas? I've got a funny feeling you uh, like the page from that one. Um, oh, I think I might know Claire. Or I probably know someone that knows her. Uh, yeah, basically that's all it is. Uh, what is your net worth? Whatever my net worth is, whatever my net worth is. Um, I do gamble a lot more than Paddock because I had to put something to the test and it's because I'm clever how I gamble. Again, listen, what people don't realize is there's a system to gambling. Um, and it's that's what that's what Paddock worked out was a system to gambling. Uh, prior to 2014, he had a vast amount of income because he had buildings, he had all sorts of stuff. However, after 2014, he had a very expensive commodity called a partner. Uh, anyone who's married or got a girlfriend or anything or boyfriend whatever you'll understand what i mean um and his assets were starting to dwindle because casinos were starting to change the rules on him uh i they would uh change out machines they would uh deny him points they would do all sorts of stuff um so you know just um bear that in mind okay 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 well, thank you all very all much. Thank you very much for joining us. So I haven't slept in nearly 48 hours, so I'm absolutely knackered. Um, so we will see. I'll speak to you tomorrow, Mike. Okay, um, bye. And enjoy the rest of the night, boys and girls. Thank you very much for joining us. And we'll see you all again next week in Vegas. All right, guys. I appreciate everything. Um, uh, stable. I'll, I'll try to get to some questions here. I may redo another broadcast to do it tomorrow, but I've got to answer this that's coming over my phone. So I appreciate everybody coming by, and thank you much. We'll do some shows from Vegas. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, uh, Claire, CL, everybody, Fawn, Vegas Two Shooters, Stable Foe, even you, yeah. Robo Max, even you, buddy. Thanks for yeah. dropping by. You, you made our night, Robo Max. I gave, I gave me a chance yep. to abuse someone. And thank the, the way you can help us out is by hitting that thumbs up button if you haven't already. That way, people can come back and get this information. And our next show will be a lot more uh, organized because we'll have it together. It won't be uh, so Matt, much. Hey, Matt, thank you. Okay, Matt, oh, sorry, we'll do Mike. a show next week. So I'll I'm tell you what, Mike. Mike, when we're on the phone tomorrow, we will plan out our show so we can let everyone know sometime over the weekend before we leave. Copy that. Okay. Copy that. All right, uh, guys. If, appreciate it. If, okay. Good night. Thank good you, night. Bye bye.